Okay, so we lukewarmly welcome you on this fine day to the third instalment of the Edge of Your Seat Thriller, How to Integrate Properly. Professor Sparkle and I shall be your hosts, and uh, likewise you shall be our parasites, feeding on thy knowledge that we are about to impart. The feast, of course, is symmetry, but first we shall solve the problem given in the previous episode, which is integrate minus infinity to infinity of dx over 1 plus x to the 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this, because I don't like the minus infinity, so I'm going to write this as 2 dx over 1 plus x to the 4, because it's an even function. It's 1 plus x to the something. I'm going to turn it into a 1 plus x squared, where x is tan theta. x squared equals tan t. I can't write theta, so I'm doing that. 2x is equal to set squared theta, d theta, dx is equal to 1 over 2x, where x is equal to the square root of tan t, set squared t, dt. The 2 on the bottom cancel out with the 2 on top, which gives you set squared t, divide that by tan t, dt, but don't forget the integrand. This is just dx, but we have missed out this bit over here. Well, it's the square root of 1 plus tan squared t, which, as we know, is just sec t. Oh, and I accidentally put uh, infinity over here, it should be pi over 2. And I can basically write this as this. And now I'm going to use the substitution, the square root of u equals sine t. 1 over 2 root u du is equal to cos t dt. Cos t is the same as this, and therefore dt is equal to du over 2 root u times 1 minus u. The limits will change to 0 to 1. Cos 2 to the minus a half t is the same as 1 minus u to the minus a quarter, but don't forget to multiply by our dt, which is the same as du over 2. This is a negative a half power, so that becomes a minus 3 quarters, and that is a negative a half power as well. Using a beta integral, we know that this is equal to gamma a quarter times gamma a quarter. Divide that by 2 times the gamma a half, which would square root of pi, and there's our answer. Okay, so back to symmetry. Jenga block, symmetrical, plane card, rotatory symmetrical, this thing, basically symmetrical. First let me tempt your taste buds with uh, a free sample. The main idea is to write an integral i in, in terms of some sort of function of itself, something like minus i plus k, because you know how i equals minus i plus k, then we basically solve the integral. Similarly, you can write i in two different ways and average them, which will give you the integral. It seems a bit silly right now. And it, you, you almost think that these two are the same thing, but practically they're not, and you, you'll see why in a second. Some other examples are periodic functions, when we have f of x plus t is the same as f of x for any value of x. Mm. 0 to 2 pi is exactly the same as, say, from 2 pi to 4 pi. Yeah, so if we have an integral of a periodic function from some number a to a plus kt, then this is exactly the same as just the integral from a to a plus t f of x dx times k. So another example of symmetry is odd and even functions. So an even function is just when we have f of x equals f of minus x, and odd functions, again, right sign, where we have f of x equals minus f of minus x. So odd functions are rotationally symmetric about the origin. As you can see here, rotate this graph, we just get the same thing. So if we have, say, the integral of an even function from minus a to a, then because the graph of an even function is symmetric about the y-axis, this is 2 times the integral from 0 to a. If f is odd, the integral from minus a to a of f of x dx is always going to be 0. The area from 0 to some number, say, a and minus a, and this area here is just the negative of this area, so they cancel out. So a simple example of using symmetry to calculate an integral, the indefinite integral of e to the x sine x dx. So the way we do this is by parts twice. So let's let e to the x equals u and sine x dx equal db, uv, so e to the x times minus cosine x minus the integral of v du plus e to the x cosine x and now if we do integration by parts again, let e to the x again be u, and cosine x dx be dv. So uv is e to the x sine x minus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. But this integral here is i, so we can just add i to both sides, and then divide by 2, i equals e to the x times sine x minus cosine x over 2. Uh, so we're going to try to integrate 
0 to infinity of the natural logarithm of x divided by 1 plus x squared dx. Um, at first it looks tough and you might think, oh, you know what, I'm just going to substitute tan theta or something. But then you remember that this is a symmetry video, so there's probably a neat trick. And the good thing about log x is if you substitute x equals 1 over u, it just turns into negative log u, and you can see it will probably turn into something with i and some constant, infinity to zero. We have the log of 1 over u, let's just do it like that. Uh, du, divide that by 1 plus 1 over u squared. You can see that we basically get a minus 1 over u squared multiplied by all of this. The negative is the same as switching the integral limits. Log of 1 over u though, that is negative log u, and the u squared gets amalgamated into here to give you u squared plus 1. Have a look at that, have a look at that. Can't you see that i is equal to negative i? And that straight away implies that the answer is 0. Now for something maybe a little bit harder. So 0 to pi over 2 of the arctan of the tan to the n of x dx, where n is, let's say, any number and see what happens. I see the integral limits are 0 to pi over 2. Why don't we try substituting pi over 2 minus x? But let's try to understand why that works, first of all, by exploring this function a bit. If n is 1, it looks a bit like this. And if n is 2, it looks a bit like this. n is 3, it looks a bit like this. Well, it's probably rotationally symmetrical about pi over 4. If I integrate it this way, and then integrate what I get when I substitute pi over 2 minus x, you can probably see that these two things should add up to a constant. So let's see if this is the case. We're going to substitute u equals pi over 2 minus x. Notice that I'm rewriting the limits as 0 to pi over 2 and not pi over 2 to 0, because du is equal to minus dx. We have the arctan, tan to the n pi over 2 minus x dx. Uh, what is tan of pi over 2 minus x? So I'm going to draw a triangle of x over here and a pi over 2 minus x over here. Tan of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. This means that tan pi over 2 minus x is surely just a cos of x. So 0 to pi over 2 of the arctan, tan to the minus n of x. Let's take this and add it to the original question. You get the arctan of tan to the minus n of x plus the arctan of tan to the n of x dx. Some of you who are well versed in your sugar identities may cry, oh I've seen this before. So let's draw arctan of x. Well if this is x, this is 1, then here's our arctan of x. But what's this angle over here? Well it's arctan of 1 over x. So these two things must add up to pi over 2. This is basically arctan of something. That's arctan, 1 over that. They must add pi over 2. Well, the integrand turns into half the integral 0 to pi over 2 of just pi over 2 dx. And you can see that the answer is pi squared over 8. Okay, so let's do our final example now. So this will be the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma x dx. So the first thing we can do is to replace x with 1 minus x. So we'll get the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma 1 minus x dx. And now we can use the trick of adding these two together and dividing by 2. So this will be half times the integral from 0 to 1. We can write this as log gamma x times gamma 1 minus x dx. Gamma x times gamma 1 minus x is pi cos x pi x. Now we can write this as a half times the integral from 0 to 1 log pi minus log sine pi x dx. So this log pi is just a constant half log pi minus a half times the integral from 0 to 1 of log sine pi x dx. So now we can just focus on this part. So if we call this j and apply the double angle formula for sine, then we'll get that j equals the integral from 0 to 1 of log 2 sine pi over 2x cosine pi over 2x dx. And now just splitting this log apart and taking the log 2 out, we'll get that j is log 2 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of log sine pi over 2x plus log cosine pi over 2x. So now we have to try and evaluate this integral and this integral. So if we first focus on this one, let's call it k, then we can substitute 2x into this integral and we'll get the integral from 0 to a half now of log sine pi x and then uh, dx will become 2 dx. So if we now substitute 1 minus x into this integral, we'll get 2 times the integral from 1 to a half now of log sine pi minus pi x dx and then times minus 1. We can get rid of this minus and switch the limits. 
two times the integral from a half to one of log sine of pi minus pi x is just the same as sine pi x. So now if we do the same trick of adding these two integrals together and dividing by two, we will get that k is a half times two times the integral from zero to a half of log sine pi x dx plus the integral from a half to one of log sine pi x dx. Or we could write this as the integral from zero to one of log sine pi x dx. But if we notice, this is precisely the definition of j. So we get that k is actually equal to j. So if we now go back to our definition of j, we can focus now on this integral, which we'll call l. l is the integral from zero to one of log cosine pi of two x dx. So if we substitute two x into this integral, we will get two times the integral from zero to a half of log cosine pi x dx. And now if we substitute a half minus x into this integral, we will get two times the integral from a half to zero of log cosine pi over two minus pi x minus dx. But cosine pi over two minus pi x is just sine pi x. We can also get rid of this minus and switch the limits around again. So this is two times the integral from zero to a half of log sine pi x dx. But this is now the same as k which is the same as j. So we get that L is also equal to j. And now that we know what L and k are, we can substitute these back into our integral for j. So j is equal to log two plus k plus L. But k and L are both equal to j. So j equals log two plus two j. And so we can solve this equation and find that j equals minus log two. And now that we know what j is, we can substitute this value back into our integral for i, which we have here. So we know that i equals a half log pi minus a half j, but j is minus log two. And so we get our final answer that i equals a half log two pi. Okay, so onto our challenge problems. So we actually have two for this video. So the first one is an easier one. It's the integral from minus pi over two to pi over two cosine x over one plus e to the one over x dx equals one. And the harder one is the integral from minus pi over two to pi over two of one over one plus two n minus one to the x times one plus cot x to the two n dx equals pi over four, where n is any integer.